بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the heavens and earth. We'd like to thank our Lord subhanahu for blessing us with another opportunity to share the message of true Islam with our brothers and sisters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put blessings and barakah in this gathering and bless this to be of benefit for us and for you as listeners. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses our brothers here at Wisal for putting this uh, channel together and for giving us the opportunity to share Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessed message and divine message, which is Islam. Today I'd like to share with you a very important treatise by a sheikh here in Saudi Arabia, in Hail Saudi Arabia, named Sheikh Ahmed al-Atiq. And it's a translation of his book entitled The Summarized Treaties uh, in Islamic Creed. So the Sheikh, he began his book in talking about the definition of Islam. And Islam, as we are all aware of, that it is a full way of life. And Islam requires that our hearts be present, that we utter the shahada on our tongue, and that we practice on our limbs. This is what entails iman, true faith in Islam. And this brings up the point that creed is of one of the most essential things that the Muslim is required to uh, believe and required to have in their, his or her life is knowing the correct aqidah, the correct creed, how, who Allah is, how to worship Him properly. The pillars of Iman and the pillars of Ihsan and all of the things which encompass Islam, this is imperative for a Muslim to have true understanding and the correct understanding so as not to be led astray. The Shaykh began in his treaties by defining Islam. He said the definition of Islam, it is to surrender to the oneness of Allah and strictly following him in obedience and avoiding associate partners in acts of worship, meaning shirk and its people. So he began by defining for us the true meaning of Islam, which is to submit to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strictly obeying him and avoiding shirk or polytheism in all of its various forms and the people of polytheism. Because when we mix and associate ourselves with those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will definitely affect us. It will have an effect upon our hearts. It will have an effect upon our manners and our morals and our values. So Islam prevents us from this kind of interaction, except when absolutely necessary. Because when two individuals are associated with one another, either one is giving da'wah and the other one is receiving, or vice versa. So Islam calls us to adhere strongly to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding shirk in the people of shirk. The pillars of Islam are five, as we're all aware of. The first one is the shahada, bearing witness that there is no God that has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is the last messenger and prophet 
of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. The second pillar of Islam is praying the five daily prayers. And the third pillar of Islam is paying the poor alms tax, meaning the zakat. And the fourth pillar of Islam is fasting the holy month of Ramadan. And the fifth pillar of Islam is performing the pilgrimage, the sacred pilgrimage to the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Kaaba in Mecca, for those who are able to do so. And all of those pillars come together in a very famous hadith, the 